All right, so let's talk about complements or numbered complements. Um, what we're shooting to do is um, find or discuss uh, how um, computers, and whether those computers are mechanical or electronic, how computers can represent negative values. Um, and in truth, given that you may have an AND gate built out of sticks or an AND gate built out of Lego blocks, given that, or, or, um, or other mechanical systems, how can you um, represent negative values? So let's dig in. Um, the definition of a complement is, um, it's really that set of values which completes that set of values which completes or makes whole. So that set of values which completes or makes whole. Um, and in its, we're talking about values here, but it could be ideas, pictures, images, um, the yin and yang complement one another. Um, those images that make up a yin and a yang, those are two complementary images. Here we're going to talk about numbers. So imagine that you have a universe of values. And that universe of values has the elements or the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we have a subset of those values, A, and that subset might be, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll stop there. Um, the complement um, of this set A, we're going to note with either a, a tick like that, or a mark like this, a tilde, or a bar. So any of those marks could be used to denote the complement of a set of values. So the complement is everything that's not here in this set. So in this case, our complement would be the values 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Um, so as an interesting um, aside, the set is still the same set if I had written those values 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5. Um, this would still represent the complement um, of A. But I've chosen to write them backwards because it makes it easier for me to highlight that as they're arranged now, each of these groupings matched like this have a complement in the sense that this complement is the value that takes um, the sum to 9. So we've arranged them in this very specific way. So we'll say more about that later. So we have a universe of values and then we have a set and then we also have everything that is outside of that set. Now Given that um, from a previous discussion, we were able to talk about how we can do some of the basics of addition using um, what we called a half adder. Um, and this half adder was comprised of um, uh, an AND gate and an exclusive OR gate. And it allowed us to generate a sum of two bits and a carry. Um, so bit A and bit B, if you look at a previous lecture, we were able to do some very basic two-bit addition um, where we had two bits A and B. And what we saw, I'll, I won't go into detail over this here, I'll just take 30 seconds to write the table. 0, 1, 2, and then 1, 1. And then we had both a carry and a sum, and when you added those two bits, you would get a zero, a one, a zero, and one and one gave us a two, so that one that 
was carried out um, as to be um, contained in here somewhere. So let's put it in this, um, this other column. The other values did not have a carry. And so what we saw is that this one, the sum to get that, it's the, oops, let's change this one. It's the exclusive or of two bits. And then the carry is the AND gate of two bits. So we observed that um, those are easier to, to determine just through observation. To actually do the work that we need to do, we will on occasion need to not just work with two bits, but we're going to need to work with three bits. And so this job, this, this half adder that we have right here, um, it works for two bits, but ultimately in order to do three bits, we're going to need a full ladder. Um, and we'll talk about that in, an, in another lecture. The other thing that's important to recognize is that um, this sum and carry A and B is really the sum and carry of just two bits. And so we need um, a half adder, or at least an adder. Try to keep it simple. An adder, another adder, another adder, another adder, another adder. And within each adder, we're going to have to be able to carry over into the next um, column um, a bit that's going to be used. So what we really would like to see is two bits and then not only two bits, we want to be able to handle any possible carry in and those two bits um, with a carry in, which therefore means three bits. Um, possibly three bits are going to be added together. Um, we would like to um, be able to take those three bits and generate a sum, but also possibly generate um, the carry out of those three bits. So if I did happen to have, um, let's change the scenario, two bits, two bits, and then, um, let's give us a simpler value, and then these two bits, one and one, give us a two. There's a carry out that's going to get generated, and then there's a carry, um, and, and so in this particular piece of hardware, we'd end up having a carry in that we'd have to handle to take care of the three bits. So we need to be able to have as an output a carry out. But our input, we may have to do three um, bits at it at any given time. And so what we'll see later on um, is that there's hardware that we can build. Um, zero one zero one zero one that can generate sums and a carry out um, so more about this we're going to use this um, a little bit later actually in the next four weeks or so we're going to use this idea to put together something called a full adder. So given that we can do basic operations such as addition using hardware, what we'd like to do is capitalize on that by using addition to um, implement um, this idea of subtraction. So if you have two values, a plus b, Let's just reuse the adder by doing A plus, well, the additive inverse of B, right? So what is the additive inverse? It's that value of B, which will, um, which when added, will generate a zero result. Um, for example, if I have a five and if I have a 
let's, let's maybe not a five. Let's, let's say we have a three and we have a seven. Or if we have a two and an eight, notice that there's a zero that's generated um, when we add these bits. So what numbers can we add together so that we end up generating a zero in the process of addition and as a substitute for subtraction? Um, so before we get into any kind of theoretical or notation heavy notation heavy note um, uh, description of the process the practical example that I'll talk about is something called a nines complement so this nines complement would look something like this I'll use nines complement abbreviated like this the nines complement of five four six seven zero zero would be those numbers which would complete um, this um, range of values so ultimately would take this um, addition up to nine so the nines complement of five well, four more would take us up to nine. The nines complement of four, five more would take us to nine. The nines complement of three, uh, of six is a three. And the nines complement of seven is a two, and so forth. So therefore, we end up with a nines complement. Um, notice that an easy way also to think about this is if we had just taken... Um, a string of nines and then did the subtraction that would have given us the same result conceptually it's just as easy to kind of do some of this math in our head and think about what value um, is going to um, give us that difference um, nine minus each one of these digits so when you take these two values the five four six seven zero zero and the four five three two nine nine and if you were to add those values of course then we'd come right back to our nine 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 so this is indeed our nines complement and we did generate all nines the tens complement would be one plus the nines complement and if we add one to this we're going to end up with all zeros so let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and use the tens complement. So five, four, six, seven, zero, zero. And then I'm going to add one to this value, four, five, three, two, nine, nine. And that will be our tens complement is four, five, three, three, zero, zero. So four, five, three. Adding one to two ninety nine takes us over to three hundred. Three zero zero. Now when I add to my original value of five four six seven zero zero, I get zero plus zero. Seven plus three is a ten. Six and three is a nine plus one more is a ten. Um, there's a ten there and a ten there. And we're fixed with either the number of bits or the mechanical hardware or the register size. Um, so this becomes either a carry out or it kind of falls, just simply falls off and it's not kept um, as part of the, uh, the number, the numeric representation. So four, five, three, three, zero, zero is um, the complement of uh, five, four, six, seven, zero, zero. It takes us to, um, zero in the way that an additive inverse uh, does. So what can we do with that idea? Take the number one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's say that we wish to subtract zero, one, two, three, nine, eight from that value.
So if you want to subtract 0, 1, 2, 3, 9, 8, um, if we did it on our calculators, we'd come up with a value of 111058. But what I'd like to do is um, use the power of complements and the power of just simply doing addition and use our existing hardware that can do addition to implement subtraction. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you can think about this as adding the negative of that value or adding the additive inverse or ultimately adding the tens complement. So the tens complement, well first let's do the nines complement. Typically it's going to be easier to think about that one first. The nines complement would be a nine, an eight, a seven, a six, 9 minus 9 is a 0, and 9 minus 8 is a 1. So what I've done is that I've taken 9s, and I've done the subtraction across each one of those digits to get this value. So this is the 9s complement, and we would be off by 1 if we just simply kept the 9s complement. So what I'm going to do is um, turn this into the 2s complement, or the 10s complement, by adding one more. So this value right here is the 10s complement of the originals um, 1, 2, 3, 9, 8. Now, let's do the math. And if we do it correctly, we're looking for the result to be the 1, 1, 1, 0, 5, 8. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And to that, I will add the 9, 8, 7, 6, 0, 2. And 6 and 2 is going to give us an 8. We're going to see we get a 5. 4 and 6 gives us a 10. Carry the 1. That turns it into an 11. Another 11. 9 and 1 is 10. That's 11. And then there's a carry outside. So we end up with 111058, which is the answer we'd expect. We were able to find a number that we could add to the original value. Um, such that we can get the same result had we done a subtraction. So 987602 served as the additive inverse of the 012398.